Anybody remember? One over S. One over S. One over S. And then we have uh, T to the power of N will be N to the power of one over S N plus one. What's at the top? I think it's all right. Yeah. Okay. We also have sign. We have cosine. I think that's what we have. We also have this. You guys remember that? We have this picture. The derivative of the transform. <coughs> the other one is transform of the derivative. What do we have here? Anybody remember? S, F of S minus F of zero. Thank you. Okay. Today, uh, we are doing this. Uh, we are replacing the S by S minus A on the right hand side and see what does it do on this other side. Okay, so this is the same as multiplying e to the AQ. Okay, multiplying on the left by e to the AT is the same as it's the same as replacing S by S minus A. We actually already have some example where this kind of illustrate this. <coughs> Remember we have um, T to the power N, yeah, E to the power AT, T to the power N. And this guy is N factorial over S plus one. And this one is N factorial over S minus A. Can you see that? This relationship, the blue one is an illustration of this red thing. But in general, the red one is true. And that is called the first translation theorem. Okay. So we can actually prove that without too much difficulty. Uh, let's try to prove that then. <laughs> Laplace transform of e to the a t f of t. That's the definition here. Okay, the definition is integral zero to infinity e to the power minus st, e to the at, t, et. 
that's the definition of the Laplace transform of this guy. But these two can be combined together to e to the power minus x minus a t f t. Okay. So uh, this will be exactly the same as f of s minus a. Okay. f of s minus a will be exactly this. So this is essentially the proof that <coughs> this guy is equal to this. Is it okay up to here? Any questions so far? So we are going to use this, okay? We are going to use this picture here. The general one, not the blue one. The blue one is a special case of that to do some stuff. What do you think this answer is? So you have a cosine 40 here. You have a cosine 40 here. And you multiply this by e to the power negative 2t cosine 40. So in this particular case, what will be a? a is equal to, what's a? Negative 2. A will be negative two, okay. <coughs> so on the other side, <coughs> this guy, cosine 40, the Laplace transform is going to be S over, S over S squared plus, O squared, is that right? Yes, I think that's correct. And so what would this be? What would this be? This would be the answer we want. We could replace S by S minus A. Plus A plus two. S will be S plus two. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so what I have found is that it's usually we just use this diagram. I think the diagram is going to be helpful for you to figure out the answer. Okay, you can use formulas too, but I mean, it's a little bit easier to use a diagram. You guys have any question about that? Uh, how did you know A is equal to negative two again? How do I know a is equal to negative two? A is equal to negative two by looking at here, because this is what I want, e to the power negative two t cosine four t. Okay, so it's actually taking the cosine four t and multiply it by this. Okay, in this picture here, e to the power a t f t. So this a is negative two. Okay. So you basically take here and then going back like this. So this is essentially a path. <coughs> what I notice is that <coughs> it's kind of, sometimes it's nice to think about it like this. This is how I think about it. Okay, you start out with this, you're going back up. Instead of going directly over here, you're making use of the theorem. So go back up, go over here, down. Does it kind of make some sense? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do an inverse transform. Okay. 
Okay, here I'm going to do an inverse transform. As this one is going to be somewhat long. Okay. So I'm going to split this into two parts. Oh, first, this bottom part here, this bottom part here. Uh, by the way, today is a lot of calculation, some of this stuff, okay? So if you don't understand the step, just let me know. Okay, I don't, I don't have to go fast or we can go slow, okay? We have tons of time. We are a little bit actually slightly ahead of schedule for this class, which is amazing. I don't know how that happened. All my other class are falling behind. Uh, this guy here, you cannot factorize it because the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is going to be negative. So in that case, <coughs> we actually complete the square for this guy. Okay, I'm completing the square. Completing the square, this becomes s squared plus. 4s plus 4 plus 2. Do you guys follow that? Two separate Laplace transforms. Do you guys follow that up to here? Is it okay? Yeah, I think it's okay. All right, good. Uh, so I am going to do the terms one by one. I'm going to do these terms. One by one, each of these separately. Uh, maybe, maybe I draw another picture. Okay, I just need space. F of T, F of S, E to the AT, F of T. I'm just copying the picture here, okay? Now, the first one, this first one, this is what I have. So we'll do it slowly. I just don't want to make it, I don't want to do it wrong, okay? Okay. <clears throat> this is an S plus two here. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm basically, going this path, I'm going this path, <coughs> going up over that. This is the plan, okay? I want to get rid of the plus two. I want to get rid of the plus two. So I want to have something like this here. Instead of S plus two square, I want to have an S square here. Okay, I would like to see an S squared. How do I go from here to here? S plus two to S. What would be A? I think I want to determine what A is. If you look at this S, and this is S minus A, A will be- Negative two. Will be negative two. Can you guys see that? <laughs> so I'm actually going from here up there. I'm replacing the S. I'm replacing this S by S minus two. Okay. So now there's the S of the top also. 
So can you see that the top will become S minus two over two? Yes or no? Are uh, you guys with me? Wouldn't it be s plus two over two? Huh? Will be will be s plus two? I don't think so. I don't think it's s plus two. I think it's because this is s. This is s minus a. A, a is negative two, right? If I read this guy, uh. S become S minus A. Yeah, yeah, this is correct. Oh, sorry. Is, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. I just got it. It's, it's okay, right? Um, I just want to make sure that I do all this correct, okay? Oh my God, I did something wrong. Uh, yeah, I do something wrong. Uh, I forgot the, I forgot this plus two here. This is bad. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, let me let me make sure I do it right. Okay, I apologize. Okay. There's a plus two here that I missed. Can you see that? This is a plus two I forgot to write. Sorry. Because I was running out of space here. I'm going to try to do it really slowly. I don't want to make any mistake. It's easy to make mistakes on these things. Okay, so hopefully it's a little bit better now. Okay. So A is equal to minus two. Okay, change this to S minus A. Okay, it will be S plus two, plus two minus two. Okay, I think this is good. I think that is good now. Is it okay? Okay. So what next? Okay. So here I have two parts, right? I have two parts. Uh, one is a sign. Can you see one is a sine, one is a cosine on this other side? Yes. Can you see one is a sine, one is a cosine? When you go from here to here? Because I have this. I have this. Are you guys able to see going from here to here on this side? One is a sine. The other one is a cosine. So one is this first one is a cosine. Cosine what? Can you see it's a cosine square root of two t two two t. That's the first part, square root two t, and the other one uh, divided by two. Divided by two. Yes. And what is the other one? The other one is going to be subtract. Subtract. Uh, sine square root two t. Uh, hopefully, this is correct. I'm differing from my notes a little bit because in my notes I did it slightly differently. 
So, are you guys still with me? Are you guys able to see this? The inverse transform of S over S squared plus two. Okay. It's going to be this, right? Cosine square root two T. And then I still have the one half out there. And then I have a minus one S squared plus two, which is sine square root two T. Is it okay? Are you guys okay? You guys are lost. Uh, so is that that's one term, one half cosine square root two t minus sine square root two t. Yeah, over here. So start out from here. I go up here. Okay, by changing the s, by changing the s to s, changing the, this s to s minus two. Okay, so this top s become s minus two. Okay. And then from here, I do the inverse transform. I get this. Are you guys able to follow that? Do you think you can like expand that like in writing? Because I'm not sure like which one belongs to which, which term. Okay, so uh, yes. this guy here, I start out with this guy. This guy belong to here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that part. It's just from when you go from f of s to f of lowercase f of t. Oh, I see. So it's L inverse of s over two over s squared plus two. Okay. This is this one, right? Does it help? Yeah, is it negative one though for the second one? Yeah, I have one. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a question. So why the symbol between the two numbers is uh, negative? I mean, minus not divided. Why is this minus? No, no, on, on the left. On here? Yeah, the symbol between the two numbers. It's not divided. Okay, so. I guess this guy here. This guy here. Okay, this whole thing here is s over two divided by s square plus two minus one over s square plus two. Does, do I answer your question? Okay, I see. Thanks. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. makes sense. We want to just keep asking, okay? It's not easy. It's a lot to keep track of. But I actually, after teaching this for several semesters, I figured this is the easiest way to be not that as confusing. Okay, this is the easiest way to do it actually. Otherwise it's even more confusing. Okay. So basically you go from here, up here, then go across. And then now, what do we do on the last step? What do we do there? How do I get to here? Multiply by, multiply by what? What do I write here? This is the answer I want for this first part. Multiply this whole thing by e to the power mm -hmm. h. But what is a? What is mm -hmm. a? A is what? It's still negative two. E to the power of negative two t times this whole chunk of stuff.
Okay, so that's the first one. Is it okay? So that take care of that first one. But I still have the second part I have to do. Okay. I am going to do the second part now. Because I want to space. Okay. So just like the earlier problem. So this is five over three. So we'll write it here. Five over three. S plus two square plus two. But I would like to have something like this. S squared plus two instead. So once again, the same as this A. A is negative two. Is it okay? So what is over here? Five over three sine square root two t. Are we okay? Do you guys follow? So what is done here? e to the power negative 2t, 5 over 3, sine square root 2t. Okay. Of course, uh, those can be combined together, okay? Those can be combined together and get one answer, okay? Because some of these are the same terms. Uh, this guy here, this guy is negative one, and this one is five over three. So I can combine them together. After I combine them together, what do I have? I will have this whole thing is going to be equal to e to the power negative two t one half cosine square root two t plus two over three sine square root two t. Okay, I think we got that. Is it okay? Uh, did I do something wrong? <laughs> oh my God. I did something wrong here. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix it, sorry. I'm going to have to fix it slowly, okay? I did do something wrong because over here, over here, this term, oh, this is terrible. Okay. I need to fix something, guys. I apologize. Uh, this, is, this is what I did wrong. This is what I did wrong. So what is on the other side here? You guys remember? What's the Laplace transform of this guy? K over S squared plus K squared. K over S squared plus K squared. Okay, here's what I messed up. I apologize for that. Okay. The, the way that I messed up is that this guy is a little bit wrong. Okay, that guy is a little bit wrong because I was doing something like this, the inverse transform of one over S squared plus two, okay? So because the top is not square root two, it's one, okay? So I mess up on that. So here you will have a, you still have a 
1 over square root 2, and then square root 2 over s square plus 2. So this is a 1 over square root 2 of, uh, of sine square root 2. Okay, so I'm missing, I'm missing a 1 over square root 2 here, which I'm going to fix. Okay, I'm going to fix that. Here I'm missing a 1 over square root 2. Okay, so here I'm missing a 1 over square root 2. Okay, so I'm just missing a 1 over square root 2 there. Okay, so on this upper one, I am also missing a 1 over square root 2. So everywhere I'm missing a 1 over square root 2. Okay, for the uh, for this sign. Okay, so at the end of the day, I am missing a 1 over square root 2 here. Okay, so this is the correct answer now with this factor of 1 over square root 2 there. I apologize for that. How bad is it, the mistake? How much does it throw you off? Do you want me to redo this whole thing from scratch? Just let me know. If you want me to redo this whole thing from scratch, I don't mind doing it. Perhaps. Maybe. I mean, it's kind of hard to see all the small details that you made because I'm in the camera. Try okay. another one, though. Can you do like another problem that's similar? Just yeah, that's yeah, similar. yeah that, that's awesome. Not the same problem, but similar. Okay. I don't even mind redoing the same problem, but um, we can find some other problem. Okay. Let's find some other problem. Uh, that one may be a little bit too complicated, though. Also. Okay. So let's find another problem, okay? Which is less complicated, maybe. I apologize, I make that mistake and it's, it's already complicated enough. When I make that mistake, it's just throwing everybody off. Yeah, I probably should do this easier ones first, okay. Why, why do I do a bunch of this, okay? Some of them will be easier than the other. Okay, I thought I start off with something too complicated. Okay. Leaf and line here. Okay. Uh, how about this? L inverse of S over S squared plus 4S plus 4S plus 5. Okay, this one is simple enough. Much similar than the other one, but it illustrates most of the points anyway. Okay, so uh, what you're supposed to do, you're trying to do partial fraction first. Okay, we try to factorize this and it doesn't work because the discriminant is less than zero. So you complete the square. Can you guys see that? I just complete the square. Do you guys agree with this step? Yeah, I think you're fine. Uh, okay, I complete yeah. the square just now. Okay, now I have something look like this now. I have to do the inverse transform. This is related to, very much related to the bottom is one over S squared plus one, right? But this is shifted. This is shifted, but somewhat shifted because of the S plus two instead of the S. 
So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to draw this chart here. Yeah, I should have, I should do a start with a simpler example is that e to the power a t f of t. So over here it's going to be f s minus t. Okay. So the plan is to go like this. Is to go like this. Okay. You start out with here, which I'm going to draw in blue. Okay. This is s over s squared plus two squared plus one. Okay. And I want to go this guy to look like. Uh, I want this to look like x squared plus one. Okay. So basically from here to here, from here to here, I'm replacing the s by one. I'm replacing the s by s minus two to get to here, right? Yes. So this top s become s minus two. Is it okay? So a is negative two? A is negative two in this case. Yeah. A is negative two. A is negative two. So from this step going down, going in this direction is replacing S by S plus two. Okay, S minus negative two, which is S plus two. But I'm going backwards, going this green direction. Okay, that green thing. So I'm actually taking this path, right? So I'm going up, going up like this and going here and then come down. Going up will be replacing S by S minus two. So get my S squared plus one. So this top S need to be replaced by S minus two. Is it okay? I think this example is a lot better and it illustrates most of the points anyway. Are we good? Is it okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to do the inverse transform of this guy. Now it's something that we can do. So that guy is just cosine t minus two sine t. I think it's correct. Okay. The first part is a cosine. The second part is a sine. And coming down, what would that be? With multiplied by e to the power a, with a equal to negative two, e to the power negative two t, cosine t minus two sine t. That is my answer. Okay. Is it all right? Do you guys want to do some more? I don't mind doing some more. I mean, probably like another harder one, like the last one. Another hard one. Course. Okay. We do another harder one. Okay. Uh, okay.
Okay. <coughs> okay. Let's do this one. Uh, so the bottom part, if you come when you complete the square, it's going to be <coughs> it's going to be what? Uh, S plus three square plus nine. So this is twenty five. Is this correct? You guys follow this? Yes? No? You need to let me know, guys. Yes. I'm just completing the square. I skipped three steps, but you guys follow that, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in this case, uh, I'm actually better off actually doing the whole thing in one shot. I shouldn't separate them into two parts. I'm going to do this in one shot, okay? <coughs> I don't need to separate into two parts. I realize that now. That's why the earlier one looks so much more complicated. In fact, it's not that complicated. Over here, I don't like the S plus 3, okay? I want an S here, okay? So I'm going up here, going up this path. I replace S by what? S minus three, right? Can you see I replace S by S minus three? So the top will be two times S minus three plus five. Can you guys see that? Yeah, this is better. I shouldn't have separate them into two parts on the first problem that I did. And A will be equal to, now A is like going back down, right? Going back down like this. S replaced by S minus A. So is A equal to three or minus three? Plus three. A is equal to negative three. Okay. So I'm replacing this S by S plus three, right? So A is minus three. Oh. Okay. Now this guy here, I can now simplify this as two S, two S, not 25, two S over S squared plus 25, minus six plus five is minus one. Is it okay? Now I can do the inverse transform of this. It's easier to do now. It's okay. What do I get? This is two. Cosine, how many t? Five. Five. Five t. Minus sine five t. But don't make the mistake I did earlier. I have to adjust it by a certain factor. What is that factor? There's some factor here. Is it five or five? Is it one fifth? It's one fifth. Because when this guy is a five, then I will get sine. So in order to make this a five, I have to divide by five and then multiply by five. So it is fine. So at the end of the day, the answer is e to the power of negative three t, two cosine five t, subtract one fifth sine five t. Okay. Is it all right?
So this is the answer. This is the answer. How do you guys feel now? Better? Yeah. Work? Better. Better. Okay, I apologize. I should have started off on some simpler examples. And also I took in a longer round, I separate them into two. I should have separate them into two. I think this is not bad. No. So you guys know how to use this first translation theorem, hopefully. It's this picture. The left hand side multiplied by e to the AP. The right hand side is a shift, replacing S by replacing S by S minus A is shifting the thing, right? Shifting to the right by A units. You remember your pre-calculus stuff? Do you, uh, is it good enough? Do you need yet another example? Yet another example is similar. You guys let me know. Otherwise, I go to the second translation theorem. Yes, no. Ask some questions. Is it because when I complete square, I skip three steps, I mean, make it bad for you? Do you I mean, want that to kind of was it at first, but it makes sense now. Makes sense now? Okay. This is taking half of six, which is three. Three square is nine. Okay, so because you add nine, you have to subtract nine. 34 subtract nine is 25. Okay. Okay. You need to let me know whether you want another pop example or you want <coughs> the examples are going to be similar. I can go to the second theorem. Okay, I'm going to go to the second theorem, okay? Is it all right? <laughs> you guys are really quiet. I think we're good to move on to the second theorem. Okay. First translation theorem, we just did that and erased that several times. So here, we are translating the function in the time domain.
and in the transform in the s domain, this is e to the power minus a. <coughs> it's really the same as this. Okay, it's really the same as this. Can you see the symmetry? Do you see the symmetry between the two theorems? Yeah. This is e to the at, that one is e to the power minus a. Now there's some technicality. Okay, here's the technicality. <coughs> your function, your original function f of t. It's defined like this. Let's say some function like this. When you move it to the right by t units, when you move it to the right by multi by a units, okay, a. you move it there. <coughs> when you do the Laplace transform of this guy, you're going to have a problem. Potentially have a problem because this part is not defined. When you move it over. So you have this part, which is not defined. Okay. You will have this part, which is not defined. And we want to zero it out. We want to say that that part is zero. Okay. Want to zero it out. The way to zero it out is the following. It's to multiply this guy by this function. And I have to tell you what this function is. It's a u here. It's a, it's a u. Okay, I can draw it right. It's a u, okay. Kind of a script, it's a, it's a curly u, okay. I need to tell you what that means. I need to tell you what this guy means. Okay. And it's going to be something that you're not going to feel too comfortable with at the beginning. Okay. You're not going to like this. Okay. Because you haven't seen this before. Okay. So we are going to define this function called ut. It's called the unit step function. Okay, ut is a unit step function. Okay, uh, this function is going to look like this. Okay, maybe I do it like this ut minus a unit step function. This function is going to be equal to zero when t is less than a, okay? And t equal to one when t is bigger than equal to a, okay? So <coughs> I am using this function to zero out to, to provide this line here. Now that function, how does this function look like? Let me just erase it for the one. So that blue one, this blue function, this blue function, the original function is f of t. This blue one is going to be f of t minus a, which is a translated version of the red one. You push the red one to the right by a unit. Now, <coughs> this, this unit step function look like this. Unit step function is equal to zero. It's equal to zero here. And it's equal to one over there. This is one. Okay. Can you see that here, what I'm doing, what I'm doing over here is multiply 
the green, the blue one, multiply the blue one with the black one. Okay, so this one is the black one, and this one is the blue one in the picture. In the picture. So when I do that, when I multiply the blue one by the black one, because over here the black one is one, it's going to leave it unchanged. The blue one is unchanged over there. And over here, I multiply by zero, no matter what this is, no matter what this is, I multiply by zero, it's going to force it to zero. And that's why I end up with, so this function is zeroing out the, this first part. Uh, you have any question? Yes, no. We are next going to do some examples using this notation to get you used to it. Okay to get you used to this. So, <laughs> we do some example here. Okay, let's try to work on this together. Okay, so I have a function. This is the function I want. Now you can see that 2t minus three, what is the shape of 2t minus three? It's going to be a straight line. Okay, it's going to be a straight line with Slope equal to two. Okay, this is two t minus three. Okay, but however, for this, if I only want it to be equal to this, if t is bigger than or equal to one, okay, when t is bigger than or equal to one, so I only want it to be, I want it to be like this. Okay. Okay, this bigger than you could want. Okay. When t is less than one, I want the answer to be zero. You guys know what this what I want? The green one represents this function here. Is it, do you guys know what I'm trying to do? Yeah. Okay. Wait, so that's the unit step function, f of t? Uh, no, f of t is not the unit step function. This one is the unit step function. This guy is called the unit step function. Uh, Okay. That means this is a step, this function, the, the graph of this function is the following. You score with zero and suddenly at the point A, you go up one step. Okay. You can marching along with zero and you have a step, step up by one. Unit step, unit is one. You step up by one at that point A. Okay. So I want to write this guy 
as a unit in terms of a unit step function. So basically what I want is that at the beginning, I want to zero the thing out. I want to zero the thing out until the point one. So if I take the red one, if I take the red one, the red one is the, the red one is this guy. This is the red one, right? This one is the red one. But I want to zero out the beginning. So in order to zero out the beginning, I have to have this unit step function like this here. Okay, so zero and take a step here, go to one. So this black one is actually u t minus one because the step where I step up is exactly at t equal to one. Okay, so this function, another way to write it is f of t equal to the unit step function times two t minus three. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Uh, ask questions. Is it really hard? Students usually have difficulty right at the beginning on this because they're not used to thinking about this continuous function like that. If you're a computer science guy, maybe you can handle this better. Are you able to see that this black one, the black one, multiplied by the multiplied by the red one is going to give you the green one? Uh, can you just quickly like summarize the whole? This picture? Or yeah, what you sort of went through since the beginning. Okay. So do you understand what a unit step function is? The definition first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you basically walk along here until time A, you just step up. So at the beginning, the output is zero. And then at time A, it suddenly jumps to one. It's discontinuous. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can use that to actually manipulate these piecewise defined functions. These are piecewise defined functions that you will learn in Math 225 in pre-calculus. This piecewise defined function can be written in a compact form using the unit step function. Then I have exactly just one function. And then I can do the Laplace transform a bit. Okay, much more easily than if you are dealing with something like this. So this is really using this unit step function, we can actually write down Laplace transform a lot more easily, okay? Because Laplace transform is actually good at handling this continuous stuff, okay? Which if you use other method, it's not going to be that, it's going to be very clumsy if you use other method. So using this method with Laplace transform will be a lot better for this continuous stuff, which you will see in a later section, okay? So I want to write this entire function in one single form, in one line, instead of multiple lines. And the way to think about it is that this f of t is essentially the, the red line, except right at the beginning. Except right at the beginning, you have to zero it out. So I'm going to take the red line and go to zero it out. How do I zero it out? When I zero things out, I want to, everything to the right of the pawn t equal to one, I want to multiply by one. Multiply something by one doesn't change it. To the left, I want to multiply by zero. Multiply by zero will kill the whole thing. So the whole thing will be zero. That is what happened here. To the right here, you multiply by one. So you keep the, the red one. So this green one follow the red one to the right of this pawn. But to the left of that, you zero that out, so you follow here. Okay, does it help? Yeah, is there still a discontinuity, uh, discontinuity in, on the, in the final oh, form? Oh, it's a discontinuous function. That's a discontinuity. But we usually don't care where is the circle and where is the dot. 
okay, whether the dot is here or the dot is here. We don't really care that much as far as the Laplace transform is concerned, because when you do the integral, that particular point doesn't really contribute to the integral because it's a single point, has no length in it, it's no width in it. So people don't really care too much about whether this is equal here or this is equal here. The, the answer will be, it doesn't affect our calculation that much. So yeah, this is a way to represent a, a discontinuous function in one in a compact form. <clears throat> okay, this is represented with this continuous function, piecewise defined function in a compact form. Sorry, I have this. I have to dismiss this thing. I don't know what this is. Is it okay? I mean, if it's not okay, you guys can ask some questions. Otherwise, I will do some another example. Okay, I'm gonna do another example. Okay. Okay, so this particular one is a little bit different from the earlier one. Okay, the earlier one, the earlier one, I zero out the beginning, and this one I zero out. I zero out the end. Okay, so twenty t, twenty t like this okay 20 kilo like this but i want to follow this at the beginning okay follow this at the beginning until t equal to five until t equal to five and then suddenly this is t equal to five suddenly drop down to zero is it okay Are you guys with me? Yeah. I want the green one. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> so I want to multiply the red one by this black one. The black one will be a one here and then a zero down here. So it's kind of the opposite. It's stepping down instead of stepping up. Okay. Because u t minus five What's ut minus five? Ut minus five will step up. Ut minus five is stepping up. It's gonna go like this. Ut minus five will be going here. At five, you step up. But I want to step down. Okay, I want to step down. I want to go from here first, go one and then zero later. Okay. So the blue one is go zero first and then one later. The black one, I want to go one first and then zero later. How do I get the black one? Just one minus this guy. Because the black and the blue add up together always equal to one. This is zero, that one is one, this is zero, the other one is one. So one minus this guy <coughs> will be this black one here. Okay. So I have, I need, to multiply the red one by the black one to get the green one. So this f of t is equal to one minus u t minus five times 20 t.
Uh, I'm gonna do some more uh, on Tuesday then, okay? Sorry, these things are kind of hard, huh? I apologize at the beginning of the lecture, I make a mistake. Okay, that example was a little bit too complicated. But I hope you get it later on on the, two trend, on the translation theorems. After we did some more example. Any other questions? I think you're good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Okay, so we are going to stop here and then I'll see you on Tuesday next week. Okay. Have a good weekend and stay safe. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.